Hi, this topic is about inverse functions and the inverse operation. An inverse math operation is when we reverse the effect of another math operation. For example, addition reverses subtraction. Multiplication reverses division and squaring would reverse square root. So in each case, these are examples of inverse operations. As an algebraic process, what we do is exchange x, or domain, with y, or range, values. We do this in an equation. We can also do it graphically. In terms of notation, most commonly, an inverse is written as an inverse function f with a negative 1 superscript of x. We read it as f inverse. Don't think of it as an exponent. It's really a, just a symbolism to represent inverse. Sometimes it's read or interpreted as f of y, again because x and y are trading places. For a function f of x to have an inverse that is a function, f of x needs to be 1 to 1. Graphically or visually you can think that f of x has to pass a horizontal line test. An example of one that wouldn't pass the horizontal line test is a parabola. A parabola has a horizontal line that would pass through two different locations, therefore it's not one-to-one -one as a function, therefore its inverse wouldn't be a function. To write the inverse of a function, y equals f of x, there are five things to do. First, verify that f of x is one-to-one -one so that the inverse will be a function. Second, replace f of x with the letter y. Next, interchange every x and every y that you see in the equation. Then we solve for y, and lastly, that y is replaced with the notation f inverse, or the f with the negative 1 superscript. So we'll work through two examples. The first one is pretty straightforward. f of x equals 1 half x minus 6. Step 1, it's a line. All lines are 1 to 1, as long as you're not horizontal. 2. We write the function as y equals half x minus 6. Next, we write the inverse. So now we write x equals half y minus 6. There's the exchange. Now we're going to work on isolating. So we say x plus 6 equals half y. 2 times x plus 6 equals y or y equals 2x plus 12. And then lastly, we're going to replace the y with the f inverse symbol. f negative 1 of x equals 2x and 12 is the inverse of f. Here's a harder one. <clears throat> oh, just before I move on, um, I should talk about the domain. f has a domain of all real numbers and it has a range of all real numbers. F negative 1 therefore will have a domain that matches up with the range because X and Y trade places so the domain will be real and it will have a new range that matches the old domain values so the range is all real. Example 2 I'm going to give you a g of x function, and it is x over x minus 3, and we want to find g inverse. So, <clears throat> step one, if we look graphically at this on a graphing calculator or make some points and plot them, we recognize that it's one to one, so the inverse is capable of being a function. Number two, we rewrite g as y, x over x minus 3. Step 3, we write the inverse by exchanging x and y. Next, we're going to isolate for y. Now, the difficulty in this question is that y occurs in two places. So we're going to need to clear the denominator, expand, Gather the terms in y, the 
which are in two locations, and factor them. Move the term without y to the other side. And lastly, I need to make a little bit of space. There. Lastly, get y isolated by dividing by x minus 1. And then we rewrite it as g inverse equals 3x over x minus 1. Now, I should just make note that this was where I began step 4 of isolating, and lastly step 5 where I rewrite the notation. Now I should say about the domain for g, the domain is all x's other than 3, and the range is all y values other than 1. What we're going to find then for g inverse is that the domain has x values that behave like the y values used to. So x is everything but 1. The range has values that are like the old domain values. So I'll say y is everything but 3. Okay. Now, next thing we need to talk about is, is uh, a behavior of inverse functions. We say that two functions, f and g, are inverses of each other if this is true. If f of g of x, the composite function, gives x for all of g's domain, also if g of f of x gives x, so the different composition also gives x for all of f's domain. These are attributes or features of inverse functions. An inverse function substituted into a function has the cancelling effect that leaves you with the expression essentially y equals x. So we're going to check this for our examples. In example 1, I had f of x was half x minus 6, and I had f inverse. Let's call it g of x to match our notation that we're talking about right above here, as 2x and 12. So f with g of x substituted is half of 2x and 12 minus 6 which is x plus 6 minus 6, which is x, which is true. Let's check g of f of x. That's 2 with the function f substituted, and we add 12. Expanding, again, I get x. So in each case, with the composition of of a function with its inverse, or the inverse function of the function, substituted and simplified, I arrive at the result of x, which is a feature of inverses. Uh, I'm going to do the first part of example 2. And that is, first function, x, x minus 3. Next function, its inverse. Or, to follow the notation of this definition, g of x, the inverse function, 3x over x minus 1. So we just found those in the second example. Let's check that out. f of g of x. So, I substitute the function g in the numerator and the function g into the denominator. Now, I want to simplify this. I'm going to get rid of the complex fractions by multiplying by the LCD, leading to the simplified numerator of 3x, and the denominator of 3x minus 3 times x minus 1. And I'm going to just simplify that further. You can see that I have a 3x on this expansion. So 3x minus 3x cancels. Minus 3 times minus 1 is the number 3. Those 3's cancel, leading to x. Again, the same result. You try g with f of x substituted and c if it equals x. Last thing I want to talk about has to do with graphing inverse functions. Now, if a function f of x has a point on the graph a comma b representing domain and range, then these things are all going to be true about the inverse. First of all, by definition, I'll just write that beside it, this is a defining feature of inverse, f negative 1 of x, f inverse, has the point b comma a on its graph. x and y exchange places, domain and range. 
The next three have to do with transformation of functions that we've studied before. We know that x minus 3 is a movement 3 to the right on the domain values. So b is going to become b plus 3. a will be unaffected. Furthermore, we know that if we add 2 to a function, that's a vertical translation. It's going to move things 2 upwards, so the a is going to become a plus 2. Lastly, taking into account shape issues, the number 1 half in this example outside of the function is a vertical effect equivalent to writing 2y on the left side of the equation equals f inverse of 5x. So a number more than 1 is a compression. And so I'm going to see 2a being the y value, representing compression. And the 5x is a compression. You know what? These are backwards, actually. I'm going to rewrite that. This is actually, it needs, because of the compression, horizontally. No, hang on. <laughs> I think I've made a mistake again. Um, this is a, com they're both compressions. So uh, the first one's right, the second one's wrong. That's what I'm having trouble with. The one-fifth is fine. I do get a smaller domain value. What I'd written wrong that was throwing me off was that the range also needs to be smaller because it's a compression. The only other thing that uh, needs to be said about graphing is to graph f inverse given f of x, we merely exchange all x, y points to what become y comma x to make the inverse. It's as simple as that. And it is a reflection on y equals x.